Well, hello, everybody. Hey. <laughs> Have you ever had just one of those days where you're like, is it Monday? And it's not, but it feels like a Monday. It's a day past a Monday. That's what I feel like today. Anybody else feel that way? Like today's just dragging on. It's been like a repeat of Monday. We have had so many technical difficulties today. By we, he means me. <laughs> and me. Um, so, it, we're just thankful that we're here with you guys. <laughs> if y'all want to know how my day's going so far, I have spent three days editing a video for our podcast. And my computer has decided to freak out about it and has now just like totally froze. And in a panic, we've spent like the last six hours trying to figure out how to unfreeze it and not lose three days of work on a podcast. Oh. So, yeah. Hey, somebody bought a journal. Oh, cool. Thank you. Caden Fitch just bought the uh, Beyond the Podium journal. Thank you very much. It's a fantastic one. You can write all tips and tricks in there. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Actually, my whole shooting career, I wrote down journals of my shooting, my practice, uh, and a bunch of different things, and I've used that to be able to go back and and work my pre-shot routine and do a bunch of other cool stuff. So awesome! Thank you so much for doing that. You can, if you guys want to get anything, you can go to the website. Do it on another tab because if you do it on this tab, you'll lose the live video. But do another tab in your browser and go to the, uh, uh, on your well. Actually, I'm looking at my screen here, but it will be right here for you, uh, and it will say Beyond the Podium Podcast dot live. You can get some cool merch. And I highly recommend journaling instead of using a computer because computers crash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, anyways, uh, so we got some comments really quick. Um, some people are saying they're getting to go back to work. Oh, cool. Um, that's good. Ron Schwartz um, saying that he enjoys every episode. It's been awesome. So thank you guys for listening. Um, and thank you for being a fan of the podcast. Um I say we, I know I accidentally cut you off a little bit when That's you were fine. talking about your computer, but it's not it. that important. I'm used to it. <laughs> Why don't we, um, so s halfway because of the technical difficulties that we've had, we didn't get a chance to get everybody's videos that send us something. Uh, and we're going to try to get to that. Um, not in this, in this episode, we are going to do a video analysis that we have pre-prepared and get some other videos that uh, you guys have have uh, put into the folder that we have um, for you to upload. Um, and uh, so do you want to just jump into that? Yeah. Yeah? Cool. All right. Well, we're going to transition over and we'll see you guys at the next screen. Okay. So um, I'm going to do this one real quick. I, I have two videos that I uh, picked. I went through and I had a, a student of mine. Uh, his name is Doug Blowers. He okayed me to use two of these videos because um, they, it's, there are two videos that I took um, about four months apart. And the reason why these are good is just because of the camera perspective on here. We can see the gun, we can see the, the shooter, and we can see the target. So there's a lot of things I, can, I have in this video to be able to show you guys. It will be very valuable for you. Um, and we can sit and diagnose body mechanics all day, but sometimes it gets a little boring because in, in a lot of the videos that we get sent, um, we can't see the target. So we can't really give you an analysis of what's happening with the bird and the target. Yeah, um, so if you're going to send in videos... The bet, like, take note of how this video is recorded and try to get something similar off that because for us to give you the best analogy, we need to be able to see how you're moving in relation to the target. Yeah. So uh, always a target view in there is helpful. Yeah, th this is a really good, valuable camera angle. So the reason why I picked this video is because um, what it shows is... Well, what we're going to see in this video and the next video is kind of go over what proprioception is and what a connection low gun with the target is and why shooting low gun, even in sporting, for my game, is more valuable than shooting pre-mounted. And then also how we can make a move low gun that throughout the beginning or from the beginning to the end of the shot is always connected to the target. Most people think that shooting a low gun is a disadvantage because they have to get into the gun as fast as possible. 
in order to make the shot based off of a visual information that you're getting. These videos are going to show how important it is to, to use felt information, uh, a proprioceptive connection with the bird, and, and how we can use uh, training drills to develop those skills. So this video here is, was, was our first lesson that we had. Um, and actually, let's go over to this screen because you'll be able to see a lot better. Um, you get to look at us all the time, so no need to do that anymore. So anyways, what we're going to be looking at here is I want you guys to pay attention to the, uh, the plane of the gun, okay? And, uh, and throughout this whole process, we're going to be paying attention to the plane of the gun and how it develops during the shot. This target right here that we're shooting is coming out of this fence, and it's basically coming up and going across like that. Break point's going to be somewhere at the top of that arc. Okay, and, the, and the, the goal here is to develop a connection with the bird from start to finish of the move. So let's watch what happens. Uh, play it in slow motion. Okay, so right now we can see the gun being mounted up into the shoulder, targets coming out. We can zoom in a little bit on this. And you can see, obviously, uh, you know, right here is the target. target, and the gun is coming up, being mounted. Now it's fully mounted. Target's still developing up into the apex. Front of the gun is being moved to connect to the bird. The shot's taken and then missed. Okay, so... Um, question is why? Looked like a good shot, right? If we take this out of slow motion, and let's go backwards with it. Okay, from here, whoops. From this moment, non-slow motion, this was what it looks like. Most people would categorize this as a good mount, right, if you were looking. Because most people make a move low gun, and the goal is to just mount the gun. I don't know why I'm looking at the camera right now. Nobody can see me. <laughs> so with this, if we go back, I'm going to point out what's going wrong here. Okay, so first thing being first, let's zoom out just a little bit. And we're going to look at this again, the plane of the gun. And I'm going to draw the plane of the gun so that we can kind of keep a marker for it. Okay? So, unarguably, that's the plane of the gun. When we zoom out, it's going to stay there. And let's watch what happens in the first part of the move. So, point of impact right now is on the line of the target. As the bird comes up, and you can see the bird right here. Okay, as the bird comes up, we're starting to mount the gun. Still looks pretty good, right? The plane of the gun still equals the uh, close to the original plane that we started in. Now the backhand is starting to take over the move, and the mount is being uh, mostly done by this hand. That's the driving hand right now. The front hand isn't really doing much. Backhand here is mounting the gun as quickly as possible. This kind of relates to a, um, a conscious state that we're in a rush to get the gun into the shoulder so we can see where it is. All right? But what we don't realize is happening, if we're looking just at the gun, everything looks like it's going up, right? Well, in reality, the end of the gun is the pivot point for the plane of this shot. And everything past Everything past that yellow dot to the target is going down in terms of the point of impact. Everything between that yellow dot and the shooter is going up because of everything pivoting. As you're mounting the gun up, you're actually this shooter is actually bringing the point of impact in the opposite direction of the target, which is what creates a, a, a really disconnected shot. Okay, As this goes through, now this is kind of leveled out. Now you see, if we zoom in, you can see that here, the point of impact of the shot, this is earlier in the shot, 
Point of impact is somewhere around here. Okay, pretty close to the bird. Later on in the shot, now the point of impact is somewhere around here, further away from the shot. So now, as he's progressing through the shot, he's actually decreasing his connection with the bird and making his point of impact further away from the target. Now we get to the point where we're starting to have to make up ground here because we lost distance in relation to the bird as it came through. And so you see his hand speed is faster than the target speed to try to make up that ground. Now because the hand speed is faster than the target speed, the mount gets completed before the apex of the shot. And now he's left to basically aim the target, aim the gun for the rest of the shot. And all of this now is being done, whoops, with this hand. This left, his front hand, for uh, he's left handed, so his right hand uh, is driving the gun. That's why you see it kind of wiggling around here. You see that? And the shot's totally aimed. See this? What's happening when this, when he's doing this with this left hand, the gun is moving totally disconnected from the eyes. So essentially think of the eyes looking like that and watch how the plane of the gun changes in relation to that. So really the connection between hand and eye coordination has been broken here. And that's what triggers a shot to be missed. So that's that shot. Um, let's go back to this. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> um, why don't we, before we get, so the other video that I have in kind of corresponding to that video that we just watched uh, is about a couple months later with the same guy. And it's a beautiful move. Um, but I, I'm going to pass the iPad over to Kaylee uh, and maybe we can use um, uh, some other videos and, and try to, figure out what's going on. So do you want to pick a video? Sure. This looks like ATA. The, it is, well, it's on an ATA field, but he's shooting skeet. Oh. Uh, this is my sister. Oh, boy. Yeah, let's do that one. Yeah, my sister. Okay, so we got my, hold on one second. And we'll transition. Where's this at? Uh, this looks like Hillendale in Ohio at the state shoot, maybe in 2018. Okay, so I'll give you this. Let's watch. Uh, you want to make it full screen so we can watch the shot? Sure. Before. All right, let's watch the shot at first. Okay, <laughs> so on this shot, what we're seeing is, sorry, we had a dog do something very distracting over here. Um, That's why you should kindle your dogs before you do a YouTube live. <laughs> to me, when I watched this shot first, her, she resembles obviously a lot like when you shoot. Mm -hmm. Um. But to me, the plane of her gun looks like it stays in position pretty much through the whole shot. Yeah. But right at the end, it seems, I can't really see the target very well, but it seems she more like curls down to the left rather than um, bows. Like you're always talking about bowing. Yeah. Well, so we can't see that this is hard to diagnose here because mm -hmm. um, the target here is coming from off the screen. Now, what should happen when we shoot a bird dropping is we should bow our body instead yeah. of Turning, uh, bring our weight forward. Now, obviously, she's twisting here because the target's going right to left and going down. So basically, the target line is this. Um, okay. And so, to be honest here, not just because she's my sister, but to be honest... Um, Watch this. So we have, uh, I'm going to basically draw where her back is. 
Okay, and then also draw the plane of the gun. Mm -hmm. And you can see, well, the camera angle changes, but you can see here that she what well she, stays on it. Yeah, she's rotating around a central point, a central core point of her body. So, like, all that rotation is coming basically around that axis point. And so she's not redistributing weight from one foot to another. She's really rotating. So that's really good. Um, and then it looks a little bit like at the end, the plane of her gun changes, but it would change if she mm -hmm. was bowing, yeah. right? And she's bowing because the target's dropping. So, you know, it's kind of a hard video to see. T Tom C. always gets in the way there on the left. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if you're if we're watching... Look at this move here, this mount. I mean, it's a, a subtle bird. Here's what's interesting on a bird that's dropping. The question is, how do you mount your gun up to a bird that's going down? It's kind of an awkward situation, right? Yeah. And so, uh, but, sh and because by doing that, you're creating a point of impact that's moving in the opposite direction of the target. But, you know, if your decision is to shoot low gun so you decrease barrel awareness, you're going to want to do it anyway. So you're going to, so to avoid a disconnected movement or a movement of the gun in the opposite direction of the target, um, you're going to want to get into the gun early. And that's what happens here. So you can see, whoops, finishes the mount, all posture change. Yeah. And you can kind of, you can kind of trace, you know, that movement there for a gun basically went like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a good, this is a very, mechanically, I really can't find anything wrong with this. Yeah. That's pretty good. Pretty good. I didn't teach her. <laughs> That's all her. That's probably why she's good. <laughs> <laughs> you are so bad. Okay. Let's see. Do you want to do another one? Sure. Okay. Let's see this one. All right, how about people... David, are you really a blonde? I actually was... I don't know. When I was a little kid, I probably was. He, even though his hair color may not be blonde, he acts like a blonde. I do not. True story. What? All the time. You're crazy. Um, how about this? Why don't we have the people in the, watching... Why don't we comment what video we want? We got... Just label them one through six, just like you're reading a book. The only problem with that is that it's going to take 30 seconds because of the delay. <laughs> so we're not going to sit here for 30 seconds. Um, let's see. Why don't we do Curtis? Okay. <clears throat> you want to watch? Mm hmm All right. I was reading the play. trying to read the comment that came in. Oh. Why do you suggest doing low gun and mount for sporting plays? It was... <laughs> Painter's always on me. <laughs> he just never gives me a break. <laughs> uh, okay, everybody's telling us to do number video two. number two. What one was that? Well, that's the one I suggested. This one right here. The people want what they want. Okay. They want what they... Well, that's a pretty safe statement. Okay, so to answer Caden's question, why do you suggest doing low gun and mount Low gun and mount for sporting plays. Hmm. Uh, Kaden, can you give me a little bit more information on that question? Because I'm a little confused. Uh, why do I suggest doing low gun and mount for sporting plays? Uh, are you saying, why do I suggest doing... A low mount for sporting? Or are those two different questions? Yeah, two different. I, I, it sounds to me like it's two different questions, but I'm not sure. I don't want to answer right, we'll the We'll do this thing. while he answers. Okay. All right, so I have not seen this video yet, so why don't we watch it first? I haven't either. Uh, let's go over to here. All right, and we'll watch. Let's watch it one more time. Anything you want to comment on? Well, the the first two things that I notice is on his second shot, he comes back on it. He his weight is off balance. 
Yeah, so um, what... I noticed that, and then it seems like, I, I mean, I can't see the target, but it seems like he has a lot of really heavy backhand move, and his gun kind of makes like a teeter-totter move to get it up. Mm -hmm. That's what I first noticed. Yeah, you can see for this first shot, so if we were to draw a line through his posture, okay, watch how in the shot, as it progresses, watch how that changes. See right here how to mount the gun, the sh mm -hmm. he leaned into the shot? Yeah. So that can be bad because what's happening is you're, you're bringing your weight forward. So like if you were to have an aerial view and say that his feet are right here, you know, and he's, and he's rotating this way as he's shooting. And basically what should happen is your, your center of gravity should be here this point right here. The, I'm going to change the color. Center of gravity should be somewhere around right there. And, at, you know, as you make this move there, what's happening is this red point is getting pushed out to there. Whoops. Wow. That was really aggressive. <laughs> Just in case y'all needed to know where there was. <laughs> in case you wanted to see that little leaf on that tree out there. Um, so what's, what's ending up happening is the weight gets pushed out to here. And the problem is that when that happens, then you're shooting on the tips of your feet mm -hmm. and you lose control of your, of your movement, you know, both in your game and my game, we don't have the ability to have finessed controlled movement. If all of that is being pushed towards the front of our feet and, and the, and the heel of our feet is coming up. Um, let's see. Yeah, and then uh, like his gun, whenever he mounts, is like the like a teeter totter. Like the backing comes up, and then the front end drops a little bit. Yeah, well, that's pretty indicative of uh, this. Is a, this is probably of everybody that shoots low gun. Uh, a move like this is probably ninety five percent in shooting. Yeah. And, um, because the thought process behind shooting low gun is, well, I can see the gun, I can see the target better in the beginning, and then as soon as the target comes out, we want to mount the gun into the shoulder and, and kind of, mm -hmm. you know, use some level of barrel it, awareness to control everything. Yeah, and I think if you're new and not too familiar with low gun, you think off the bat that you have to get the gun up really quickly, like it almost makes you feel rushed. Right. And, and so then you make a, a bad move with it. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the equivalent of this is, re in reality... Um, you know, the one thing he's doing really good is, you know, once he gets into this position, your movement, the movement is it's pretty good in terms of yeah. rotation. It's very good. Really good. Uh, but if you want to improve this shot, I would try, you know, the purpose of low gun is to rely on instinctive shooting, to rely on pr proprioceptive shooting, to rely on not having a barrel awareness, play, uh, a high level of barrel awareness to place the gun into a specific spot. And shooting low gun this way really just is shooting pre-mounted with less time because when we're shooting, and this is why I say, you know, a, a huge percentage of people that shoot, um, do it, shoot low gun, shoot low gun like this, where they just mount into the shoulder real fast and they try to track the target and shoot it. Really all that's doing is you're shooting the shot pre-mounted, but you're just creating more, uh, uh, more of a chaotic start, less of a controlled start in the beginning. And so if you try to draw that mounting process out throughout the whole shot and finish the mount, like right now, bang, if you had that mount last a longer amount of time, you'd have a really good visual connection to the shot. Mm -hmm. um, but the good mechanics in terms of the rotation... I bet you this guy is killer on... Upland birds. Mm -hmm. You could tell. Right there was the off balance a little bit. Yeah. Probably, you know. Something. And it was obviously a high target. Yeah. Well, and you can see that, you know, if you track the movement of the of the barrel, it's like this. Mm -hmm. So let's say that the target is doing that, going going up and coming to the right, and and watching this video down here. Um. The, the weight goes on to the back part of the right foot. Watch. You see that right mm -hmm. there? And that's what's causing that lack of balance. And you can see it transpire after the, the recoil takes place because then all that weight and balance ends up right there. So to fix that, what would you do? 
Uh, if you if you are taking this shot, the trick would be to, you know, as the target's going up, uh, become more vertical in your posture. Um, you know, don't lean forward for the sake of leaning forward. Uh, when a target's up in the air, it doesn't make sense to lean forward and bring your weight forward uh, because that's going to bring your point of impact down. So um, let's go back to this. So if, uh, if a target goes up in the air, then stand up and shoot vertical. And it'll be much more relaxing, much more comfortable. Uh, and, and uh, you know, a, a big misconception with shooting sporting clays is that we always have to be aggressive and get into this aggressive stance yeah. and Same lean forward. Bunker. And, yeah. yeah. And all that it, does is lock you up. Yeah, and a lot of trap shooters, well, a lot of trap coaches will teach their students that for whatever reason that they need their elbow way up here. Let me just say right now, no, 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 you do not need your elbow <laughs> way up here, okay? To so, explain why. Well, because it creates... A couple of things. It can create a mechanical canting of your gun. So if your gun fits you when you just straight mount and then you raise this arm up, it's going to twist your gun. So now you have a cant in your gun. So if you're struggling with canting, think about that if you're a trap shooter. Whether I mean, if you're just any shooter and you raise your arm, look at that for being one of the things. And then another thing, huge problem that it causes is a lot of tension right here. So when you go to move, make your move to the target, you're all hands and it's like you you're just gripping onto the gun to hold on and that's you want to shoot in a relaxed state and the more tension you create mechanically is already a bad start yeah yeah i mean i always tell my students that you know relax your upper yeah, body yeah relax it yeah it, in in my game and especially american trap your hands are only there to hold the gun. Your move should generate from your lower body. Yeah. It's not, it should never generate from your hands. Right. The other thing about it is like, if you, if you have physical tension, why? <laughs> yeah. Like, why do something that adds to the physical tension that you have if you don't need it? And like what Kaylee's talking about with the chicken wing, mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing that, what's the purpose? If you relax your upper body and just hold the gun calmly, there's no added benefit to adding this. Mm -hmm. it, it serves no purpose, no benefit. I mean, there, there's, it's just a, a, like a um, stigma around trap shooters that this is like the correct form, and it is not. <laughs> um let's do let's uh, let's let's do this talk a little bit about our uh, podcast is going to be in a uh, release tomorrow oh yeah so, well hopefully if my computer <laughs> decides to to stop acting up but i don't know if y'all saw on our facebook or instagram but we uh released today that our next guest for tomorrow is um a blue angels pilot and we this is what i've been so excited about for the last a uh, couple weeks because he is actually his name is Brandon Hempler. I don't have to like keep it a secret anymore. His lieutenant, lieutenant commander Brandon Hempler. He flies the number five jet for the Blue Angels, <clears throat> and he's a really cool guy. And we got to sit down and talk with him. I actually met him in Arizona at the um, training camp for the Olympic trials. He's a shotgun shooter, so um, got to meet him there, and it was really cool. We stayed in contact, and now we've got him as a guest on our podcast. And he's the man. Yeah, he's he's cool. Super nice guy. Yeah, we got to talk to him about shooting and how the men his mental game like parallels with shooting mental game and and um, the mentality it takes to perform some of those maneuvers and. It, it's it's really cool. Yeah, he, he was cool to talk to. It was really cool. I'm really excited for it. Mm -hmm. um, that's it. the. Uh, let's see what else we got. <laughs> Jack Wagga says, "Oh, I was close with Blue Buffalo." Y you had the blue right. <laughs> <laughs> blue. Um, okay, so Caden says it it was a um, a single question. He rephrased it. Why do you suggest a low gun mount? Hope that makes more sense. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Um, if I, to fully explain the answer to that question, I would we would literally need to do a whole podcast. Um, long why story short. Yeah, why don't you give him a short story? Of yeah, it? long story short, shooting pre-mounted um, locks you up physically. So if when you're shooting pre-mounted, you're starting from zero movement, you're starting with a high level of barrel awareness, 
and you're having to fight that barrel awareness and that rigidity in movement to start with. Shooting is not about rigidity, it's about fluidity and being able to connect to a bird without doing it by aiming. And although you can get a lot of people that will sit down, uh, even some of my friends will say, you know, well, you, you, you know, I make every shot uh, based off of a visual placement of the barrel. You might be able to do that, but the question is, are you able to do that at the highest level possible in the game? And when it gets to that level of what we're talking about, uh, the answer is no, you can't do that. Uh, and, and, and you can use science to prove it. So when you shoot pre-mounted, it is pretty much impossible to, to ignore the visual information in front of you that you're giving your brain about where the gun is. So what ends up happening is the, the, the game becomes about fighting your conscious desire to aim. Okay, when we shoot low gun, we rely off of this if we do it right. Okay, so for example, a low gun is done uh, in two ways. You can have like a, a more like hunting simulated low gun where basically, you know, like let's take for example, um, this, the second Did, video here. Yeah, like the second video versus Brianne's video, his sister's video. Like she starts with a very, like she kind of just as a very light low mount and then goes into it. Yeah, well, not even that. Let's take, I mean, w let's go into the video that I was going to show you guys with low gun. Uh, this video here is a low gun shot. You cannot get a better connection to a bird pre-mounted than, uh, than this shot. Yeah, I'll make this full screen. Okay, so... Nice don't press any buttons on that one. <laughs> Quit the stream. Okay, so low gun. You would say, okay, um, let me go back because I need to talk. This doesn't make any sense. So low gun, you would say, okay, there's no way that I can make a, um, a physical connection to a bird low gun. It's just mount the gun, aim, pull the trigger. Watch this video. I'm just going to play this video in slow motion first, and you can tell me if that statement I just made is false. Okay, so watching that video, check this out. Let's go back here. Okay, and now we'll go to the video analysis screen. Oops. Nope, no, no. <laughs> we almost just... <laughs> okay, um, watch this. Do you guys see this connection here? I mean, the target... Let me zoom in. He's like identically mimicking the target the target and the gun are one okay the point of impact of the tar of the gun is exactly where it needs to be from start to finish he's not aiming the gun he's looking at the target and then al allowing a proprioceptive hand-eye coordination to place the gun in the right spot by making the gun speed in his hands the speed of the bird so he's rotating at the speed of the bird He's rotating his body left that, at the speed of the bird to the left, and he's bringing his hands up at the speed that the bird goes up. And when you do those two things at the same time together, I guess the same time and together means the it's same the thing. the same thing, yeah. Then you end up creating a point of impact that's online with the bird the whole time. So you end up making a shot that has a connection built in it from start to finish. I mean, this is an absolutely beautiful shot. There's no point in this time that if I, in this shot, if I had a string connected to the gun, to the trigger, I could pull it and it wouldn't break the target, even though he's shooting low gun. I mean, I could pull the trigger right now and it would break. And he's, there's no conscious energy spent trying, uh, uh, say that again because we probably lost audio there. There's no conscious energy spent trying to put the gun in the right spot all that's happening right now in this shot is that he's looking at the bird and matching the speed of his body to it and and in an ideal world the millisecond that he finishes the mount he'll pull the trigger this there's a little it's a little bit off there but i mean but talk about a beautiful pretty, yeah. move you know and not only that but if you notice 
we're talking about working the hands together, the plane of his gun here, watch, it's unchanged. I mean, everything here, this is such a beautiful move. So to sum it up, low gun. Low gun is better because you can develop a connection with the bird without seeing. And if you learn to utilize those skills, you don't have to fight barrel awareness or aiming throughout the shot. And 100 times out of 100, your, if we want to talk very basically, your subconscious computer works much better than your conscious. Consciously, we can do one thing at the same time. Subconsciously, you can do whoever knows. Uh, but it's like anything that you do using hand-eye coordination, is it better to do it consciously or subconsciously? Think about right now. I mean, everybody listening right now, if you just think about how you're breathing, all of a sudden it becomes kind of hard to breathe. <laughs> so low gun is better because you can always develop and maintain a connection with the bird that's unseen but instead felt. And that's a much stronger level of connection because you're getting so much visual information without the gun there. Uh, what else we got? So the question uh, by P. Higgison, doesn't Bill McGuire shoot pre-mounted? Uh, Is this the main camera? Would just be us? Yeah. So the question of does Bill McGuire shoot pre-mounted? Um, Bill shoots with the gun in his shoulder but not mounted in his face for the whole shot um and there are some shots that he brings the gun out of his shoulder on but no he doesn't shoot pre-mounted um he i don't know what he calls what he does but basically he's anchoring the gun in his shoulder most of the time and everything is moving in his hands it's like a baby yeah okay. kind of like a cheat mount in a way mm -hmm. um Wayne Hughes says, with a low gun crosser, how much lateral movement with the target wound you have during the mount process? I think that's a typo because I'm not sure what that means. I can't see him from here. Um, so Rice wants to know, if you're trying to do shooting low gun. So if what you are trying to do by shooting low gun is to match the speed of the bird perfectly and to shoot proprioceptively, where do you set your hold point? It's a good question. Hold point, um, there's only one place for a hold point to be, uh, and that is exactly where you can start at the exact moment that the target starts, where you're not beat and you're not waiting on it, and you're right on line in terms of your point of impact. Yeah. So the, there's no general rule for a hold point. But. <laughs> Your whole point might be different than David's because David's accustomed to hearing and seeing the target a lot quicker and his body can move a lot quicker than, like, say, mine on a particular target. Um, and so his point might be a little, whole point might be a little bit closer. My whole point might be a little bit further out. But essentially, we're, we're doing the same thing. It's just when I can recognize it and start and when he can recognize it and start. And you get better at that with practice. Yeah. So, talk, what about your hold points in your game? I mean, how much do they change? Um, that's solely dependent on uh, the background of the bunker, but mainly it's dependent on, like, who's shooting and what technique you're shooting. Like, for me, I shoot a different technique than probably 90% of the people out there, mm -hmm. besides the people that I coach. Um, and So, you teach 10% of the people? I teach a lot. Oh. <laughs> I teach a lot. <laughs> just kidding. Um, and uh, a whole point varies off of the background. So mm -hmm. obviously we can't view the targets before, you know, like two or three times each station. We don't know if we're going to get a left or right or straight away. So our whole points have to be adjusted to be able to catch all of them. Yeah. So that's a little bit harder to go into without like having a bunker and showing you and, right. and, and all of that. And then it also, what I do here may have to be totally you know, change for like Finland or right. India or right. something, you know. And do whole, do whole points influence start time or no? Yes. Yeah. 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 If your whole point is too high or too low, I mean, the same thing, like you can get beat in bunker. You do get beat in bunker every shot, but you want to be able to try to control that the best you can. And, um, you know, just like in sporting clays, you don't want to have it a whole point that is not going to be a benefit to you. Right. 
I'm working on something. You can keep talking. So well, that's all I gotta say about that one. <laughs> that's all I gotta say about that. Yeah, but no, yeah, our whole points vary just as much as your whole points. Um. Do, do they? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Let's go back to the video analysis screen. Okay, so this is a side by side comparison. And what I want to show you guys is the difference in l low gun in the correct way and then maybe low gun in a slightly incorrect way. So I sync these up so that they're, they're pretty much, um, they all, re the timing at which they're synced up to is the shot. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning of the move. And I want to watch how, and I want to show you how an incorrectly um, uh, connected move in the hands negatively influences, uh, the, I guess, the connection to the bird. So watch on the left screen right now. Okay, everything is coming up. And the plane of the gun as it's being mounted is, is unchanging from start to finish, right? But if you look on the right screen right here, the back hand is faster than the front hand. So on the right screen, where the point where the gun is going up, the point of impact out at the line of the target is actually going down. Whereas in the video on the left, as the gun is going up, so is the point of impact because the plane of the gun is remaining unchanged. Very important. Okay, so because of what happens early on in the video on the right, as the as the point of impact goes down. He's going to have to recover that lost distance at the end. So when he finishes the mount early, because the backhand was fast and it got the gun into the shoulder too early, he's now going to have to finish the move with his front hand. And you can see that. And now, So basically the target now is moving when the gun is not, because he, he beat the target to the spot. Whereas in the video on the left, this whole time, do you see how the connection is still there? The two things look the same. The gun and the target are moving the same. And if you watch it finish, so now if you're looking at the video on the right, the left, uh, the front hand on the video on the right is is correcting the placement of the gun because it's not in the right spot. And he overcorrects and ends up missing on top. The video on the left, everything is always there in the right spot, and he just pulls the trigger when he feels it. Left bird's broken, right bird's missed. Very cool. Very cool, yeah. So, um, Ron says, depending on the shot should determine draw length. Yeah, depending on how much the bird goes up equals how much the gun is down when you start. Um, tell me something cool, Kaylee. Well, I'm in the market for a new computer. <laughs> Still not over it. That's not cool. That's expensive. Still not over it. <laughs> I think we're going to be good, though. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> it, on top of that, it's also thunderstorming really bad here. So if this is choppy, I don't know if it's choppy or not. But the, if this is choppy, it's just it's because it's storming. Yeah. But that's really cool to, to watch the two side by side mm -hmm. like that. Um, I mean, pretty much the sim uh, an identical shot. Yeah. And you can see side by side how having bad mechanics influences the connection made. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, have you ever shot a target in your game? I'm, I'm a serious question. Have you ever shot a target in your game? And this is also a rhetorical question. But, uh, and, and been like, man, I felt the bird in my body. You know, like, you just feel the movement. You can mm -hmm. feel connected to the shot. Have you ever shot it and been like, what was that? Like I felt nothing there, right? Yeah. Like that girl in, in Finland that decided not to even shoot her second shot. Oh, yeah. When we were in Finland <laughs> last summer, listen, Finland was not very good for anybody, but um, we were in Finland last summer, and uh, the squad that I followed, there was this girl on there, and I don't remember what country she was from. Do you? No idea. I don't remember, but she had, I felt so bad for her, because bless her heart, she had like a... a like an eight or nine going for a score and she had five left to go so she was not having a good round 
and she was on station five and this hard left came out and she looked at it and shot and missed the first shot and then she just put her gun down and was like no nah. she didn't even shoot her second shot like i think we've all if you've shot a significant amount of time we've all had shoots yeah like that yeah you I just have. you just you just uh, laugh you're like well i'm not gonna waste another shuttle on that one <laughs> <laughs> i can't say i've ever done that in a competition though I, yeah i've never well no i have i have you have mm-hmm. i've had times in a competition where i don't even fire the second shot i'm like that's i i should just it's <laughs> there's no point to fire the second shot oh right now oh my gosh <laughs> Man, these guys are asking good questions, but they're you guys are asking hard questions. So Painter wants to know how does the requirements of fee task affect the draw length? Mm. Um, well, first off, the draw length in fee task is twenty five centimeters. Period. So you can go lower than that. I don't know why you'd want to, but you can't go any higher. So basically, what it does is forces you, you know, like in the video. Um, uh, Go back to the video analysis. In let's say in this video here, um, where you see him having an unchanged plane of his gun here, in feet task that's not really possible because the back of the gun is going to have to move more than the front of the gun because it's forced to start so low, uh, and so what ends up having to happen is is basically. Uh, it, it doesn't allow your hands to be in time. A lot of times the back of the gun has to be faster than the front of the gun. That's why it's a little bit more challenging than shooting sporting. That's all. Good question. Um, let's see. I'd say that's pretty good for now. You didn't do the other video? Which other one? That one. This one? Yeah. Oh, Ron. You want to do it? I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what we need, guys. If you are if you shoot bunker, send us a video. Because it would be cool to have Kaylee analyze that. Which so buttons are you is, pressing over here? I'm new to the remote. <laughs> I got a promoted and now I'm in charge of the remote. I never promoted you. Show them what you're it. doing. Video analysis. Okay. See, go back to where you can see us because it's more interesting. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta show the video in full screen because if they're watching on a phone, it's really hard to see with all that on there. Well, maybe they need a bigger phone. <laughs> Don't make that's called an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Um, oh man, we're getting a lot of questions now. Okay, so let's see. Haven't seen this one yet. This is Ron. I like the gun. Good move so far. Okay, so, first thing I see right off the bat, I'm just going to draw draw the target line real quick. Target line is like that. Okay, so if that's the target line, let's zoom in here a little bit. And I want to pay attention to the, uh, if you could trace the line of the gun. And it's going to basically be something like this. Watch. Yep. Like a yeah. L so, move. Yeah, so what that what's happening, and I'm going to get rid of this white line because it, it covers the target. We can see that, um, so there's the target right there. If you saw it, it's going to be right. Oh, I see it. Okay, yeah. so right here. Okay, so that's the target. Now, what in this video, what would happen is you would feel like, um, you would feel like you're starting in time. Right, but it's gonna feel like the target's really fast because you are starting in time, but you're starting only up. Mm -hmm. So as you're moving only up, the target is covering the, a lot of ground. Whereas you should be starting rotating yeah, and what, up. Yeah. So as so let's say let's let's track this. Right, we're gonna count where the target is by the time that Ron starts to move to the right. Okay, so the target is right here. By the time that you that you start to move right. So you've lost this much gap. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's going to make you feel extremely rushed, 
like you're not like you got to move faster it's going to disassociate your emotional response to the bird and make you kind of move your hands a lot so what should happen right now your point of impact is about right here okay we want the point of impact to start right here and we want well if that's on the line let me see where is the okay so we want the point of impact right here uh and and as soon as you start to see this target right here come out or hear it, start rotating at the same time that you're bringing the gun up. So body's going to be rotating this way. Hands are going to be bringing the gun up this way. And it's going to allow your gun to stay online. And you're never going to feel rushed. You're never going to feel like the target's closing your gap, the gap on you. And it's going to allow you to have a much more calm, much more precise shot. And you don't, it, that gets rid of the L-shaped move. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because right almost, now. You're almost like bringing the gun up. It comes into your vision really fast. And then, uh, it, like it cuts your move in half. Yeah. What And what's it's happening. It's like a very rushed. We can't really see. Can I do it? Okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to be, get it so you guys can see the whole video. So, oh, I'm not going to be able to do it that way. That's a bummer. Well. Why can't they see it? For some reason, our screen... Go to the other video where it's us. The main camera? Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, coach is seen, yeah. Okay, so here you can see more of the, the whole body, right? So look, the whole body. And... Um, Did you have to circle it so they I like circling. could it's see fun. the whole... <laughs> they know what the whole body Listen, is. Listen, Kaylee, it's fun. <laughs> oh, gosh, I can't even do it right. All right, anyway, so watch the whole body here. And so where from the very initial start when we want to have rotation with the bird because the bird is starting to move to the right, we should also be rotating our body to the right. But you see how the initial move yeah, here is actually move is up. Yeah, up in the hands and, and then, then leaning forward. Yeah. And that's not helping. So that's just closing the gap. Th those are unnecessary uh moves to that target that that don't play a benefit to you so um what he's saying is instead of up and over make it all one fluid motion yeah jack says if you ever use one of my videos make sure it's muted because my emotional response is always the same word not appropriate for g ratings <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh that's funny um <laughs> so i know there was a i know there was another um John Garza says, can you speak to the Wendell, I think in quotation marks, your finger is never wrong. The finger is the lead concept. I don't know how to determine the lead with your method. So um, I don't know what you're referencing uh, about so Wendell. like the finger? Yeah. Can you I, hold it? I, yeah. I'm not sure what he's referencing there, what Wendell said. But um, my method of shooting, you don't worry about lead. Um Put it this way. If you start, let's say this. Let's say for Ron in this video. Hold on. <laughs> You're just, you like transitioning the, the video a lot, don't you? Well, <laughs> they need to see the video. You're fixing <laughs> to talk about it. Okay, so let's say that this is the target line, and it is. Okay. Uh, and the... Uh, Let's say for Ron, with Ron's reaction time, that if he starts with his point of impact right here, and he starts rotating at to him, what's the speed of the bird, this way, at the exact moment, as early as he can, in terms of his reaction time, and he doesn't get beat by the target, and he's not waiting on the target, that's his perfect hold point, right? And we can test that point for every individual person by saying, okay, well, what if I start my gun right here? And we call pull and we try to rotate and we realize, well, I got beat. Or we could say, well, what if I start my gun here? We call pull, we try to rotate, and we're waiting on it at the end. And, and you will know that by the way that it feels, okay? Um, 
everybody knows when they're waiting on it or when they're when they're behind or even if the target isn't past your and you can do this with your hand even if the target isn't past you if it's if it's gaining speed on you real fast you're too tight okay so let's say that we've determined through testing before he walks into the stand watching showbirds that that yellow dot is for ron the best hold point okay now there is a, a, a skill that everybody has that has to do with what uh, this whole mechanic based system revolves around which is proprioception okay so that's if your favorite word for the last three months it's, by the way. well it just comes up all the time <laughs> naturally the uh if you're it, if you're, it, why don't have you told them like just quickly what proprioception is in yeah. case they look it up no it's <laughs> no look it up basically it's like your um how your hand and eyes work together, your peripheral vision, how you relate things, and how your it's hand-eye coordination. Yeah, it, it's like a it's it's like the sixth sense. It's Fancy one word. level higher than hand-eye coordination. Fancy word for hand-eye coordination. But it's more than that. Okay, so it, John, basic, basically, it, and this may be way off or maybe not, but <laughs> if <laughs> I'm gonna say it anyway, basically proprioception. If someone throws you a ball and you go to catch it. You don't think of how much lead is in between where your hand is and where the ball is to intercept the ball, right? It would be your hand-eye coordination, your natural ability to go catch the ball because your eyes are watching it, your hands know where to go. That would be hand-eye coordination. Yeah. yeah. But what I'm saying is like proprioception is basically the sense that you feel your hand is in the right position to catch the ball without determining the gap in between your hand and the ball. A better example, a really good example of hand-eye coordination is eating or typing on a keyboard. If I'm eating, let's pretend this is a fork and I grab food. Can they all see the screen? Yeah. And I go to eat and I can put that in my mouth without looking at it. Okay. I can behind my head, I can touch my hands together without seeing them. Proprioception is the understanding of you, what things, either a tool in your hand or your own body, uh, where it is without looking at it. Okay, so when... Um, that would be per my baseball analogy, catching analogy. Yeah, yeah. But, you're, but you can see it. But like the ball. It, yeah. yeah. So in this video, yeah. going back to how do you determine lead, John's asking. Let's say that we've determined that that yellow dot is Ron's perfect hold point. Okay, uh, and from there, okay, he's going to use his ability to rotate at the speed of something to match the speed of the target. Okay, so um, if any of you have ever stood in your front yard and watched a car drive by, and you, if you can watch the, the car drive by and just rotate your body at the speed of the car as it's passing you, that's what we're going to be able to, that's what we're using here. Okay, that skill. And we're basing it off the start time of, of Ron's reaction time. And his reaction time happens to be so that when he starts with his gun at that yellow dot, and he starts to move at the speed that his body reacts naturally, he's neither beat nor waiting on the target. So when that happens, he's also going to be, let's say that Ron's break point is right here. Okay, so that's the break point. Why do you do this, iPad? Here's the break point. Just say yellow is the break point. Well, okay. yellow is the break point and the hold point. Okay. Okay, so um, let's say that if that's the break point, let's do something cool here. I'm going to change it here. No, that's fine. Okay, the transitioning. So, if we take an understanding of how much this target is going up between where Ron's hold point is and where Ron's break point is, that equals the vertical change of the bird. Okay? And that vertical change is... I'm going to do it in blue, this. You flatten everything down to a two-dimensional drawing. The bird is going up that much. That should equal... That should equal his draw length. So let's 
watch this. We're going to take a white line, draw his point of impact to the break point. When we, at the break point, this is fully mounted, okay? So his gun is pointing right there at that break point. If we keep a parallel line, meaning that his hands don't move in a different speed together, then his draw length should equal this. Come on, iPad. So on this bird, his draw length is just a, about the size, the length of a fee task mount. Okay? But that's starting from over here. So that should mean that if he starts where that blue circle is for his hold point, with the gun down here and his point of impact pointing there, when he calls pull and rotates right at the speed of the bird in his body and brings his hands up at the speed of the bird here, by the time he finishes his mount, it's going to be right there. And if he pulls the trigger, then he'll break it. And you don't have to worry about anything about lead. All you're worrying about is looking at the target. All you're worrying about is looking at the target and uh, matching the speed of the bird in your body and in your hands. If you do those things and pull the trigger when you finish the move and set everything up for... So you're saying there's a science behind lead. Everybody, right? It's math. Yeah. yeah. Everybody thinks like when they first see a target, they're like, wow, I wonder how much lead that will take. But it's calculated off of your hold point, your break point, how low your gun is, like all these different factors. Yeah, we don't have to worry. You don't have to think about lead. So when I look at a bird, I don't, I don't look at the bird and try to look at my where my I hand think, is. Oh, and that think, needs to take three feet. Yeah, never. I don't do that. Yeah. Uh, and and neither it, you can take any new shooter. I mean, truly, I do this all the time in lessons. Take a new shooter that knows nothing about shooting, and teach them to move at the speed of the bird in their body, move at the speed of the bird in their hands, pull the trigger when they finish the mm -hmm. mount, and <laughs> they'll hit it. And it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a more. It's a better way and a more consistent way to be accurate than trying to figure out lead here's a good question rodrigo i can't read it super away and anselmo one says uh, the technique that you teach the move of body and gun do you think you can that can be used on a swing through shooter uh no so um the the reason why the answer to that is no is because the whole way that we're trying to develop this connection is through matching the speed and connecting to the speed of the bird and if you're swinging through the speed of the bird, you're not matching uh, the speed of the bird in your body rotation, and you're not matching the speed of the bird in the way that your the speed that your hands are bringing the gun up. So it would rely a lot on timing, and it, it won't work. Is there ever a target, like just a specific target, that requires a swing through method? Like I know a lot of people think you have to swing through a rabbit. Right. So for me, no. Yeah, I don't. There's no bird that I ever come from behind. Uh, that I can think of. I don't know why I would want to, <laughs> unless I just by accident and got beat. I don't know. I think for me, not knowing very much, it's easier to swing through a rabbit. The reason why that's easier is because um, a, a swing a swing through move, it's timing based, but it also decreases barrel awareness because there's not two things right in front of you going the same speed that if you look at the target, you also see the gun. And you want to look over here and stop the gun and let the target pass. Mm -hmm. If you swing the gun through, you're looking here and you just bang and you pull the trigger when it feels right. And so it, it, it allows it to be an easier visual connection to the bird. But there's timing involved in that. So you got to have good timing that day. Um, I mean, there's a, a longer explanation to it. But, the, but you know, it will definitely work. The, put it this way. Shooting swing through on a bird or pull away on a bird, um, you can see immediate results slightly quicker and I, I mean like in a, in a certain amount of shots I'm not talking about years uh, you can you can see immediate results maybe in the first shot because you're tricking somebody into um, flinging the gun and and not seeing the gun uh, you're teaching you're you're doing something that's kind of a prescriptive way to not look at the wrong thing 
Uh, and so it works immediately. Um, what I'm talking about in the way that I teach, you got to work on specific skills, um, but it's, it's a much deeper rooted connection to the target. Uh, and it would take, you know, let's say maybe if I have a new shooter, kind of like a cheat, like in simple terms, a swing through might be considered as like a cheat way to get higher scores fast. But ultimately, your way, if you stick with it, are going to be higher, more consistent scores. Than you for sure can shoot better doing it that way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Hey, somebody said, I hate rabbits. Me freaking too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, he had a, a lesson in New York, and they had a rabbit up on a uh, on a platform, and we we sat there and shot it for about maybe a box or two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think that's why he says that's why he always gives me crap because I made him shoot all those rabbits. Anytime I see a rabbit on a station, I like fully prepare for it mentally, physically. Yeah. Like I zone in on the rabbit. I may not even hit. I may not even hit the other one, but I like focus in on the rabbit. Like if I walk away with a four, yeah, out of eight. I'm going to hit all the rabbits. Why do you, why? It's just like one of those things, you know, everybody goes and talks about, I missed a rabbit today. I'm not going to be one of those people that's like. Let me ask you something. It's like a, it's the competitive side of it. What me. if? Like the rabbit woke up that day and was like, I'm fixing just to wreck everybody's day. And I, I'm going to say, not today, rabbit. Not happening. So you ever shot a rab boo? Yeah. Like a rabbit that comes out flat? Flying yeah. through the air. What if? I didn't say bat to. I said rabu. I heard you. Okay. That's. What if we created a modified version of bunker, that were all rabus? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Don't give anybody that idea. Bunker's hard enough as it is. Could you imagine how hard that would be? That would be insanely hard. Scores would be if you shot a score with a two in front of it. It'd be amazing. You'd be in the hall of fame. <laughs> That would be so hard. Oh, oh Painter says three boxes on the rabbit station. <laughs> JB Wheels says, you mentioned you don't come from behind the bird. How do you approach a rising bird? Um, if I'm shooting it on the way up, I stay in front the whole time. I'm looking through the gun. Kaylee, why don't you explain this? Because explain looking through the gun. I don't mean shooting a bird going up, but... Explain looking through the gun. Well, that's hard because it's in two different sports. You mean like for what I shoot or yeah. what he's talking about? Well, for the way that you look through the gun in the beginning of your shot, like and your setup is the same thing that I'm doing during my shot. Yeah, so for me, the way that my eyes work best, they work better when they're closer to the target. I'm, I've trained them to catch the target as quick as I can and as soon as I can. Um, however, I don't want my gun to be as close to the target because if you're thinking, put it in this perspective, if you put your gun right on where the trap machine is, like let's say sporting clays, and that thing comes out, it is impossible to start at the exact same time. You're gonna get beat a little bit and then have to play catch up. So I hold my gun higher and look through my barrel because I want my eyes closer. And that allows me to be able to get the gun because I have to start pre-mounted. So in kind of the same when you're shooting teals, I guess, is you wouldn't be like a, I don't know this, but I, for me, I wouldn't be like totally low mounted. But anyway, um, I need the gun out of the way a little bit for my eyes to work the best that they can work. So I hold a high gun, look through my gun, and that allows me to be able to catch the target a lot better. Right, but explain what looking through the gun, how do you look through your gun? I'll show you. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Let me squeeze in here. Don't make fun if y'all saw my pajamas. This, this is why you always wear pants. <laughs> this is unloaded. Okay, clearly nothing. You're not going to shoot anybody through the camera. Nothing. In, well, just gun safety in general. <laughs> this is unloaded. So... When I mount my gun here, okay, and I have it right here, the gun is clearly looking or pointing straight at the camera, camera. but when I say I'm going to look through my gun, I mean I am looking through this receiver here 
and looking down. I don't know if I can hold it with one hand. You're looking down here. Looking down. You mount, I'll put my hands where. Yeah. So you're looking at, yeah. bring it up higher so they can see. You're looking, not that high. <laughs> you're looking down here. Yeah. And you're doing that by what? I don't know what you mean. I just look down there. Right, but most people don't understand. Like, if you if you get a lesson with somebody, say, all right, if you look. hold your hand right right here, you can look down. I mean, you still have full control of your eyes. Yeah, it, it, you don't it, have to look exactly like where your gun is pointing. You can like, for me, when I start pre mounted, I have my gun here and I look down towards the bunker lip. I don't look out over my gun. So, the way to explain what's happening is it has to do with. The con so we have two eyes. Uh, hopefully, all of us here do. I know there's some people that I actually got beaten a shoot off by a guy with uh, with one eye, and I got beaten a shoot off by a guy with one arm. That one's on TV. You guys can watch it. But the uh, he's awesome. Uh, anyways, if you're we have two eyes. Okay, so it's like two camera lenses, and your eye looks in a plane. Okay, where those two eyes converge is your point of focus <clears throat> most people think that you can't look through the gun through a whole shot because they don't understand depth of focus in relation to shooting so if the gun is mounted and in front of me if you look down people say well all i see is my gun and i can't see through it mm -hmm. well that's true but you're not looking far enough out yeah so you have to look down but you also have to look out what that does is it separates the planes of your, you know, like if I look at my finger right here, I'm going to look cross-eyed. If I look out there at the wall, I'm not. My it's the same thing as like if you put your finger here, you got to, like he said, understand the depth. If I put my finger here and I'm looking at my finger, no, I cannot look through it. But if I look further out at the camera or at the wall, I still see my gun, but I'm now, or my finger, but I'm now looking through my finger. Yeah, so you've, you've made your eyes more parallel so you can look through the gun. Now, the question is, what are we, I know some of you are going to say, well, you're using your non-dominant eye to look under the gun. Yes and no. As the shot, so shooting low gun with a, um, can you grab a, a, a gun? Where's your gun? I'm going to get in trouble with Parazzi for this. So, we don't have a good enough camera angle here, but let's say that the target is down here, okay? And I have my gun up. My point of impact is up here, okay? The target's coming from down here. My eyes are down here. If I keep the plane of my gun level as I mount the gun, my point of impact is always going to be up above where the bird is. So I can keep, I can stay low gun with, with the gun, keep my eyes down looking through the gun, and as I mount, I have both of my eyes looking at the bird, and only at the last millisecond when I finish the mount is my non-dominant eye, the one that's looking at the, that has all the visual information of the bird. Because at that point, then the gun is in the way of my dominant eye, and I can't see it with that eye. But if I'm shooting correctly, mechanically, it doesn't matter which eye I'm using to look at the target. Because I'm not basing any information off the visual information here. So, yeah, I am shooting a target going up with my non-dominant eye. Uh, but because I'm not doing it by looking at the gun, it doesn't matter. I can't tell any difference in the visual information that I'm getting or the physical placement of the gun. Um, so I keep my point of impact above, you can, I keep my point of impact above, so do it on this screen here. Um, let's say that the, the target is coming out of this trap. Going, oh, yeah, that, I could show how I do it on, on the trap house. Yeah, going straight up. And let's say that my break point is here. And let's say that my hold point, my hold point in terms of my point of impact is here. And 
where my gun looks like it is from my eyes is probably here. And when I call pull, I'm going to start to mount the gun as soon as the target mounts and the whole time as soon as the target comes out and the whole time my point of impact uh, is above the line of the bird and when I finish the mount I'm at this red dot here and I pull the trigger and the target breaks. Uh, so the, the barrel is never really occluding the bird uh, in terms of what information I'm getting. Uh, somebody wants to know what wood your stock is made of. It is maple. Um, I believe this one is tiger eye maple. I've had it for a really long time, so I can't remember the exact name, but I believe it's tiger's, tiger's eye. Does that make, Makes sense if you say it does. Tiger's. <laughs> I used to have a stock out of big leaf maple, and then I had this one made, but it's been like... How long have you had that? Is that six or seven years, probably? That wood? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. well, this is my second round of it, but it, it's maple. Some form of maple. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's tiger's eye, but... So, or, yeah, we'll just go with that. If that's not a maple, it's tiger something. <laughs> <laughs> tiger king? No. Carol Baskin. <laughs> Them Baskin bees. Um, you're welcome, JB. Cool. Well, uh, any questions that y'all have before we get off here? We hope that this made sense to y'all. Let's do five minutes of rapid fire questions from them. Okay. And then we'll call it quits. Cool. So y'all send in your questions. Rapid fire, like when I say rapid fire questions, I mean like quick yes or no or scenario versus scenario questions. So like, so like who's better? Like obviously me, not David. <laughs> we'll just do something fun and finish it off. Um, yeah, it's hard. That that whole explanation is hard um, to do on a camera maybe we should do it would be cool to, to um, take some video out there shooting mm -hmm. it, it would be cool to do with the shot cam okay so rice wants to know favorite takeaway like food I think so yeah uh, I like hibachi that's not like a fast food oh well why does it have to be fast food well, then, that's, then you would have just asked, what's your favorite food? <laughs> well, you can order the fast... I'm thinking of the food truck. Babe, you can use takeout anywhere. I'm thinking you of the food the truck in Greenbrier. It's fast food. <laughs> Is it not? <laughs> Rice, you know the fast food truck in uh, Conway, Arkansas? That's her favorite. Okay, well, if we're talking fast food, then Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A? Don't, don't copy my answer. My favorite is um i like chipotle mm, typical what do you mean you would why you're from the north what is that it's mexican it's like a northern thing to do <laughs> you're crazy <laughs> um have you been in your pajamas all day yes i have <laughs> I've been in, well, pajama pants all day. Yeah. I've been pretty much in this outfit for most of the day. But, um, yeah, I, working from home, I see no reason why to put real pants on. There's just no reason for it at all. So, <laughs> yeah, pajama pants all day. <laughs> um, uh, I like Brian's question. What was Brian's question? Did we miss a question? I don't know. <laughs> Doug... Doug Bowers wants to know, unconscious or subconscious? Doug, it depends on how, how philosophical you are. <laughs> um, I, I guess we missed a question. I feel bad because I don't see oh, it. See if you can go back up. Arkansas. Oh, here it is. It says, why is bunker hard? Two shot singles got to be easy. Oh, my goodness. You've clearly never <laughs> shot it then. Who asked that? <laughs> my, my friend Brian. <laughs> Uh, bunker is not an Olympic event because it's easy. You don't see sporting clays or anything like that in the Olympics. It's, sporting clays is too hard, and the uh, it's not fair. You know, people don't want to watch a bunch of people just miss. Yeah. Well, then why they put bunker in there? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, it's a very challenging game. Why don't we talk about yesterday? 
when we were shooting. What? Who what was about it? who was hitting all the targets? My dad. The bunker shooters. Were or the you hitting shooters? any? Yeah. You were not. That's more than you. I have documentation to say you weren't. It's not my fault I was using those hand-me-down shells you gave me. No, I was using those too. <laughs> uh, okay, let's say... Um... Anyways, bunker is hard. Even though it might, like you've seen that you get two shots at it, it is hard because there are a ton of different angles, a ton of different heights to them. You don't know which one's coming. Uh, it's very fast. The backgrounds are, they vary from place to place where you go. You don't get to see the targets before you shoot them. I mean, there's, and not only that, but it bunker after you somewhat um, master the fundamentals, which they're never truly mastered, becomes all mental. And that's easy to say with a lot of different sports, but I think definitely in like bunker, it's a little bit more challenging. You know what game is almost all mental? Golf. Chess. Golf. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do we think about the shot cam? I love shot cam. I love uh, to train with shot cam, and I think it's really cool that they now have a setting where it may have always been on there, but I didn't realize this until the other day. But um, Well, not the other day. I guess it was hunting season. But um, that you can start the camera and it'll just yeah for turkey hunting con yeah continuously go and you can get your hunts on on camera which is cool yeah i love the show i really do i think the shot yeah. cam's awesome yeah and uh, when we were talking about looking through the gun i have a shot cam video for next week uh that that makes that um like kind of gives you an analogy of what we're talking about the shot cam video is really easy to to see what we're talking about i, I have to say that I was asked that same question in a live podcast like two years ago, and I said it was it was of no use to learning how to shoot. And long story short, I ended up meeting the owner of Shotcam, and he came up to me and said, "I saw your interview, and Wait, I think you you're wrong." You said it was of no use. I said, I said, I was like, yeah. Someone asked me about the Shotcam for learning mm -hmm. to shoot. And I said, well, there's no real use in learning leads. And so I said, I don't see the value of it for, for, for learning to improve your game. And, um, but I said that with no real experience in it. And so I'm teaching down at a club in, uh, in Florida and he, the owner came up to me and he introduced himself and he said, I saw your interview, uh, and I, I I'm sent it a lot. <laughs> I was like, Oh crap. And he said, I think you're wrong, respectfully, and I want to take a lesson with you and use it in the lesson and show you how it can be useful. Uh, because he said, I think that you just don't understand everything you can get from the information that Shotgun gives you. So I said, sure, I, you know, absolutely. I, I, I mean, I'll eat my words. And, um, and boy, did you. Yeah, I think it's freaking awesome. I think that you can learn so much from the Shotgun. Um, I mean, I use it for my platinum program. I don't know how you could look at shot cam and not think that it could be of a benefit to you. I can see like, it, no, I can't record like my physical movement, like watching my body turn, but from the camera and from the video of that, I can see if I went up and then moved from the video. I can see if I made this kind of move from the video. I can see where my shot was when I pulled the trigger. I can see the line that I was on versus yeah. the target line. I mean, it's like to look at that and say it wouldn't be a benefit in your training or just in general would just be. Yeah, I mean, awesome. you would be like a pre-David. You would just be ignorant. <laughs> ignorant. <laughs> ignorant. It is. It's a great product. And on top of that, amazing customer service, family-owned business, and I'm a huge fan. Uh, and they don't even pay us to say this. No, we just like them. <laughs> yeah, we just like them. Uh, okay, so um, Arkansas or Ohio? Arkansas. Ohio. <laughs> Give a quick argument why Arkansas. Duck hunting. We got duck hunting. <laughs> Ours is better. Oh, no. Flooded timber? You got flooded timber up there? We got the got? Great Lakes. What do you got? We got, you got marsh. mallards up there? Yeah. You got, what else you got? A lot more you than You got wood here. ducks up there? Uh-huh. You got teal? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you got ours, scoters. Ours is, yeah. You got redheads. Yeah. You got pintail. Yeah. Yeah. You got. Listen, we can hunt in Arkansas and flooded timber, which is the best duck hunting you can get in, and not have to fight negative ten degree weather while it's snowing. I walk out 
in my waders and a thick, thick, heavy jacket, go out there, my dog's comfortable, I'm comfortable, we have a good hunt, and we come back, and nobody died. Listen. From from y- hypothermia. It's You're just used to easy hunting. That's, that's not easy hunting. That's easy. No, it's nice weather. You can wear weather. short sleeves. It's enjoyable weather. <sighs> nobody wants to sit out there and get, like, sleet on them. <laughs> I do. It's fun. Well, then you can <laughs> <then> stay in <laughs> Ohio. <laughs> um. Okay. Let's, what else we got? Favorite place in the world to shoot? Hmm. Um, Start with a country. Uh, yeah. I was Other than the United countries. States. Uh, I really enjoy Italy. Um, I like the ranges. Banana. I like how they. I like how they treat shooting over there. I mean, their shooting um, in Europe is like our football over here. So it's really nice. They have shooters on boxes of Wheaties over there. I'm no joke. This is a true story, and I probably have a picture of it somewhere. I'm eating at just this random Italian restaurant one night with the team, and I ordered a Coke to drink, and they came out, and it was the Italian shotgun shooter with his shotgun saying, like, Team Italian. On the Coke. On the Coke, on yeah. Coca Cola. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's like so cool. I was like lucky to get on. I mean, question for you. Yeah. If you're in Italy and you go to a restaurant, is it considered an Italian restaurant or just a restaurant if it's Italian food? If it's Italian food? Yeah. It's Italian. But you're in Italy. Yeah. So do you well, have to pre-classify? Well, let me ask you this. Do you, yeah. When you eat Mexican here, do you say, I'm going to this American restaurant? No, you say, I'm going to eat Mexican. But if you were in Mexico. <laughs> Even though it's in the U.S. But if you were in Mexico and went to go get Mexican food, would you have to qualify it as Mexican food or would you just say, I'm going to get food? I'm going to go get, well, they probably have different restaurants of different varieties of food. <laughs> So whatever restaurant you're going to, whatever food, the the origin of the food that it comes from, like yeah, the country, right. that's where you're going to eat. I gotcha. If you're going to a steakhouse and it just happens to be in Italy, you, if you're Italian, you're not going to say, I'm going to this Italian restaurant that serves steak. You're just going to say, I'm going to a steakhouse. Right. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> l- low spatula for potatoes? What? That's the question. <laughs> Low spatula? Duke Durham says, low spatula for potatoes. <laughs> Is that an inside joke? I don't, I don't know, know what that means. It has to probably do when you were talking about um, potatoes in the last podcast. But I don't understand what a low spatula is. As opposed to a high spatula. What's a high spatula? I don't know what a high you spatula is. You don't know what a high spatula is. What is a high spatula? Um, I don't know. I can't come up with the... <laughs> Something fascinating. Uh, if you could clarify that question. <laughs> um, let's see. How is Cypress Creek coming along? It is coming along. We, uh, well, we're just giving you an update in our process. We have everything ready to go. We have the land is ready to go to be started, pretty much building on it. Um, but we had to redo the survey basically because I'm indecisive and... Originally, I wanted the lodge to go on one part of the facility, but now I've changed my mind. I want it on a different part of the facility. So we're now having to redo the whole survey, and thanks to corona, they're not working to come out here to do the survey right now. So we're postponed about, I don't know, probably another month or so. Hmm. Hopefully not that long, but it's coming along just very slow. Yes. I see my name up there. What does that say? Where? Uh, Oh. Kaylee, the house is on fire, and you can either grab the dog or David. What's your choice? The dog. <laughs> David can make his own way out. <laughs> um, I was going to submit a video for analysis, but everything I shoot at the farm is too far or too small of a target to see in the camera. I guess I'm missing out tonight. Oh, the Trevor Shanahan. Oh, man. Send us a video hunting. Justin Meyer says, can you discuss in the future how to analyze shot cam videos? Oh, that sure. would be a we'll great... We'll do a whole, a whole episode. Here's what we'll do. We'll have the, sh- the owners of shot cam on a podcast, yeah. and we'll just talk about it. And um, we'll we'll try to take some shot cam videos uh, for next week's video, so we can kind of show you how you can apply them in training and how they might be useful to you. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, do they have woodcock in Arkansas? That's yes. A good qu- they do? Ducks? Woodcock. Oh, what, yeah, we have woodcocks. You do? Yeah. Where? They're all over. 
Well, well, tell me where they to, are. I don't know, I but go. I go to Wisconsin to shoot them. I can shoot them right out here. <laughs> they're mainly, just finding this mainly in the uh, northern part of Arkansas, but yeah, we have them. Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Curtis says, so waders and PJs. Exactly. Do you? You just put leggings on or like some thick, good pajama pants and your waders over them and you're good to go. That sounds comfortable. Yeah. That's yeah. why Arkansas is better. <laughs> I'm hunting up in Ohio, I gotta put 17 layers on under my waders and then probably waders over those. <laughs> Trevor's arguing with me that diver hunting and uh, flooded timber hunting is not equivalent. I know that you would agree with him. <laughs> I think it's fun to be out on a layout boat. In the Let me of just lake. tell you my experience. Or the ocean. Mm-hmm. Here's okay. The ocean is good for fishing and laying on and the beach. Hunting. Laying on the beach. And hunting. The ocean is not good for hunting. <laughs> Let me ask you. I'm something. not gonna get on my boat and go up north and go out on the ocean and think, man, it's a good day to hunt. No, I'm gonna bring my fishing pole. Or if I go to the ocean, I'm gonna lay right where it stops on the <laughs> sand and tan. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. No. How did our hunt, how have your hunts gone this past year in Arkansas? Good, well, right? Yeah. Yeah. How did our hunt go when we went up? You went, no, because you fell asleep and scared <laughs> away the birds. Why? Because why? Kaylee, <laughs> we had a, bu- okay, listen. I took Kaylee out hunting t- on Lake Erie. Lay Which out was boat, cool. I was decoys. so excited about it. Like, you were not, like, you fell asleep. No, after we laid there for two hours. <laughs> Because it's hard not we, to fall asleep when every you're just time rocking. we get birds flying in. Listen, this is how spoiled and uh, someone growing up in Arkansas is for hunting. You 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 couldn't judge how far away the birds Listen, were. Listen, if you're saying that you don't have to work to get birds in to where you're hunting in flooded timber, <laughs> you are dead wrong. What I'm saying is, when a bird is 200 <laughs> yards Trevor, away, Trevor, back me up here because he's trying to say that that ducks just fly on into the timber. They don't I, fly on into no, the I'm timber. No, I'm not saying that. They have the whole ocean to fly around. What I'm saying, obviously, is, they're going to see you laying there. As what happened out on Lake Erie in Sandusky Bay. When a bird is 200 yards away, we still want to be laying down and not making noise or shooting at them. <laughs> I waited till they got like 70 yards. <laughs> Gosh. The ocean's, uh, oh. my depth perception's off from mm-hmm. Give it all the excuses that. you got. Yeah. Well, anyways, long story short, um, we didn't kill one. <laughs> we could have. In Ohio. However, we killed our limit every time in Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. Let's see. I say that's pretty good. Yeah. Cool. Sounds Very good. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you guys for, thank you to Caden for going to uh, the Beyond the Podium podcast dot live and getting a shooting journal. You guys can buy some cool stuff there. Um, and. Uh, right here. Per, yeah. It starts right there and goes all the way to there. What did Trevor say? Trevor says, Kaylee is right, like I said, prettier and smarter. Thank you, Trevor. <laughs> I don't like this. My friends are ganging up on me. Well, it's just, you're just wrong. <laughs> if you say so. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. Uh, it was fun. And we'll try to have less technical difficulties uh, next time. Yeah, and we have the videos that you've sent, in, that y'all, those of you that have sent in videos, we have those videos. However, my computer <laughs> that they were on is currently having a meltdown. So hopefully uh, next week we can get to more of y'all's videos that we sent in. But we do have your videos, and we appreciate y'all sending them and taking the time to send them in. Yeah, so we are going to log off here, go finish the uh, Blue Angels podcast. Yep, and stay tuned tomorrow. We have recorded, uh, we have him, not live, but we have him recorded too, so we'll be able to post the podcast on our YouTube as well, so you can see that. So don't forget tomorrow to listen to it, download it, watch it. Anyway. Awesome. Subscribe, cool. like. All of the above. All of the above. Yep. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks, we'll see guys. you later. Adios.